What is up guys, Faded here and welcome back to the channel for another video and today I have a quick update for you on the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series gaming laptop. I already have a review of this laptop up on the channel so go ahead and please go check that out right now before watching this video. I just want to give those of you who are still thinking about getting this laptop an update on some of the things that I have noticed after using this PC for a solid 6 months and 4 of those months being my daily driver. I'm not going to be going into the design of this thing or anything like that. All of that is in the review video, but sometimes you just don't catch everything in the first week or so of use. This is going to be a slight negatively slanted video because I'm only really nitpicking the things that bothered me. So it's still a great laptop, but we really need to figure out if it's right for you. So let's get right into it. Okay, so number one, the touchpad. The touchpad is garbage. I thought I could handle it and there are times when it works, but it, nothing seems to make it any better. It's always registering left clicks as right clicks and randomly zooming in on a web page and it seems like no matter what drivers you use, you cannot get around this. It really cripples the ability to use this laptop without a mouse. Now this one isn't too bad, but I did mention in the review about the backlight being bad, but overall the keyboard is pretty cheap and I almost suggest getting another keyboard when gaming because the keys don't do enough to guide you home to your WASD keys and this can be quite frustrating. Now for sound, the speakers are pretty garbage. Even after a driver update, using any enhancements causes popping and crackling in the audio, so you pretty much have to use the stock settings, which is terrible. And I think I'm going to even remove the subwoofer and place my own inside of it because it sounds really tinny and one-sided. So I suggest a good set of headphones or a good headset. Now the screen is nice but the color accuracy is way off and it is lacking in the brightness category as mentioned in the review. But I have noticed the need to turn up the brightness settings in certain games. I'm merely mentioning this because many have been looking at this for a photography PC and let's just go ahead and get another monitor. If you're thinking about getting this PC you're probably going to need another monitor for any kind of professional work with color adaptation. Now battery life. I can hardly get 3 hours out of mine anymore and barely an hour when gaming. This is frustrating when you can't simply take a backup battery and slap in a charged one and then throw the other one on the charger while you're playing with that one. This has a detrimental effect on its portability, being that you always need to carry around that adapter. You pretty much need a laptop bag with a mouse, a spare keyboard, a headset, and even your AC adapter. This is a lot to carry around, so if portability is your main thing, you may need to rethink this. Now the webcam is standard, nothing going on here, but the mic tends to get a bit of feedback. It's almost impossible for me to Skype chat without someone hearing themselves, unless of course I turn them way down, and this may be a problem for many of you that want to do a meeting or a go-to meeting or any kind of conference call using your laptop without a mic or a headset. There have been considerable updates to this PC, but still, from time to time, the Wi-Fi adapter just doesn't want to work anymore. Every now and again, I have to restart in order to gain that connection back again, but this is quite rare and it's nothing like when it first released. Lastly, temps. During the review I had really low temperatures and they stayed well within reason, but I have noticed that after about 30 minutes of gameplay now, the GPU and the CPU tend to get quite hot and I do see some throttling on some cases. This is hard to reproduce and it happens occasionally. I'm not sure if it's some background task that might be causing this issue, but it does get considerably hot and it may throttle on you as well. I think this may have something to do with the thermal paste that they chose to use, which is less likely going to be really cheap. So now that we dredged through all of that, I still have to say, this laptop has kept up with all the latest games and I've been able to play just about everything out there and on decent settings as well. Of course, it can't handle my HTC Vive, but that is to be expected. I have been really impressed with its ability to play my entire library. Driver updates are pretty steady and with every release, games tend to get a little bit better. Now I know next-gen GPUs are right around the corner, but I'm sure we will see the desktop releases and then the mobile versions will follow soon after. So there still is some time for this laptop to really shine. So overall, I'm very happy with this PC, and I am in no way being paid by Dell to say this or anything else. This is all straight from my true feelings. I still strongly recommend this laptop because of its low cost and its high value, but I felt that it was necessary to let everyone know my feelings after using it for quite some time. In many ways, you get what you pay for, and you certainly get a quality gaming laptop, but without the bells and whistles of a more expensive model. Some sacrifices have to be made, but it's still worth every penny. 
So that's all I have for you guys. If you have any more questions about the Dell Inspiron 15 7000 series, please let me know in the comments below. I will try to provide you with as much information as possible. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys have a good one.